Now the BIOS is a set of input-output instructions that are stored on the motherboard on a read-only memory chip. Now it's read-only, right? And that read-only chip is called non-volatile. Now non-volatile means that it does not lose its information when the computer is turned off. And once that read-only memory chip has been programmed, it can't be changed. Well, not exactly true. It can't be changed very easily because motherboards now use a type of ROM or read-only memory chip that's called flash read-only memory or flash ROM so that the ROM can be flashed or changed using special software. Now, it's not as easy as changing a file on your disk, but when we do that process of upgrading the BIOS and we flash the ROM, there's also another term you may hear for that same process, and it's called installing firmware upgrades. Now, keep in mind that word firmware, a program that is stored on read-only chips or read-only memory or ROM chips are called firmware. Why? Well, for the most part, these programs are firm. They don't go away when the computer gets restarted. Now, programs that are stored on erasable media, like hard disks, flash drives, thumb drives, those sorts of things, those are called software. So if you've got a program on easily erasable media, that's software. And programs stored on more permanent read-only memory chips is called firmware. Now, the BIOS contains information for two different kinds of hardware settings. There's hardware and settings that never change because they're really fundamental to that particular motherboard. A good example of that is keyboard drivers. There's a standard set of keyboard drivers. They're kind of hardwired, hard programmed into the motherboard, and those never change. But then there's hardware and settings that can be changed because we can put different types of hard disks into our machine. We can sometimes put different types of RAM into the machine. And so some of that might need to be changed. Obviously, we can have different configurations of RAM. But now, wait a minute. I can just hear some of you shouting at the monitor now. Wait a minute, dude. Back up a minute. You said that read-only memory was read-only. We couldn't make changes to it. And that is correct. So how do we change settings for like RAM, hard disks, and some of those other things? Well, this is where the CMOS chip comes in. Because true enough, read-only memory that contains the BIOS is not very easily changed, and we don't want to easily change that. But it is read-only, but we could program into their variables that we can load and we can pull settings from somewhere else. And so we're going to store those settings on the CMOS chip. Now CMOS stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Now this is a way to impress your relatives at Christmas. It's a way to try to convince your in-laws that you're not a total, complete loser. And so throw that word around at Christmas and Thanksgiving maybe, okay? Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. Now the ROM chip reads some of its data from the CMOS chip, and the CMOS chip allows us to easily make changes to it. Now the CMOS chip is permanently attached to the motherboard as well. However, we can go in and make changes to the BIOS, and we're actually making changes to the CMOS chip. And the next time the BIOS runs, it will read those settings that we've changed from the CMOS chip. So we have changed the BIOS, we just didn't change it on the read-only chip, all right? Let's look at that in the diagram to make it a little bit more easy to understand, okay? So in this configuration, the BIOS runs on the ROM chip. And so we start the computer up and BIOS begins to run. Now BIOS runs and it's going to let the CPU know what all's out there and what needs to happen and so forth. One of the first things that it does is it reads data from the CMOS chip. And so once it has read the data from the CMOS chip, now it has all the information to give to the CPU. Now keep in mind, if we go in and make changes to the BIOS, we're making changes to some of those settings on CMOS. And the next time we start the computer and BIOS runs off the ROM chip, picks up those changes on CMOS. Once it's got those changes from CMOS, then it passes that information to the CPU and the CPU can then start the machine up. And it knows about its memory and its disk and its expansion slots and all that sort of thing. Now, we configure the BIOS, the way we make changes to the BIOS, and actually we're changing the CMOS, 
is when we start the machine up, we can press a certain key or a key combination, and this will interrupt the startup and kick us over into the BIOS setup screens. And now usually this key is escape or F1 or F2 or something like that. You'll just have to experiment. Now sometimes when you start your computer up, it will tell you press escape to go into a setup menu or setup mode, or sometimes it'll say BIOS or whatever. You may have to restart your computer a few times to find the one that's right. You can go out and Google it, just play with it and you'll get it. I'm gonna show it to you in part two. Or you can just go check the documentation for your particular motherboard, or you can go look at the manufacturer's website for your motherboard and find it the nerd's way. Okay, so that is how we are going to configure BIOS. And join me in part two, and we'll look at this in action.